Spring is one of my favorite times of year where we start to shake off winter and your garden gets filled with color and growth. Feels like time for a landscape challenge. There is a great spot outside of Bunnings Pimble, you guessed it, right where the sausage sizzle is. And they're letting me build a welcome garden from the ground up. And I'm gonna pack it full of great ideas that you can use on your next project. To get us started, I need a bit of a hand from the red and the blue shirts. So to fast track the plan, and before we can get on to creating our garden, there's some important prep work to be done. So first, the team is installing some timber subframing to house our deck. We'll need some steps up to our deck. And finally, all the guys are in for the first of our big treated pine planter boxes. Guys, I'm so sorry I'm late. You know, traffic and all that stuff, it's horrendous. Thanks but, for showing up. Oh, yeah, no, that's all right, mate. I'm here for you, I'm here for you. The framework is in, and it is looking absolutely awesome. Lucky, I bought the rest of the master plan. Now, this is a busy road, yeah, for sure, but we've got some amazing gum trees behind us and some nice Australian shrubs, so I'm going to use that as my inspiration and create an Australiana public garden space. For added interest, we're creating a raised garden bed with a few layers and heights. Central to the design is our nice wide deck. A timber screen will add a focal point, all of it immersed and softened by lush greenery and a combination of native trees and plants. Just like the garden was always meant to be here. Every good garden bed needs some edging. It helps to define the space and stop grass growing into your plants. And there's lots of options. Here they've used some treated pine edging. You could just use a spade edge, but really to keep the grass out, you want something solid. So I'm using a Corten steel edge. Now you can see these lengths are really flexible, so we'll be able to get our nice curves. Australians have got a real love affair with the deck, and it's not hard to see why. They're great spaces for entertaining, and timber just adds such a nice warmth to a space, it just makes you want to be in there. I've selected a 140mm Merbal board. It's nice and big and chunky because it suits the proportions, and I've found these fancy little spaces that have got these flaps on, so when we're spacing them out, it's convenient because they don't fall through the gaps. And I would just stay there forever, because that's where I belong. Nice to see some plants finally arriving. You'll notice I've increased the garden bed all the way out here using the edging as well. That way, by encroaching into the entry of the store, it's really going to entice people up onto the deck. Now, this is only a semi-permanent structure. So I've protected the paving below with a bit of plastic. In the front of the garden, I really wanted to bring in some vertical height with some trees to balance the proportions of the deck, but we've got no soil. So I'm using these tree rings. They clip together really easily, and they give us some extra soil depth. Now, these would be perfect at home if you've got rocky soils or really poor draining soils and you want to grow some vegetables. Bring it up out of the ground, and you can grow anything. I really love when the plants arrive on any project because they just bring so much life to all the hard structures. And the quality here is really, really excellent. Like most gardens, you always start with the big stuff, so I'm going to start placing the trees. All right, Benny, lift it up. Look at that, that's nice. To bookend the end of the deck, we've got this fantastic feature screen with this great copper detail. Weighs a little bit, but it's going to look good. Oh, thanks, Jimmy. Glad you made it light. Well, yeah, I didn't build it. <laughs> now, that's what I call a screen. Oh, oh, oh. 
Grace planters are a really useful thing to have in any garden because they bring the soil level up so you don't have to bend over, meaning it's a lot better on your back. Perfect for veggies and ornamentals as well. These are constructed really easily just out of tree to pine sleepers that have got bugles supporting the corner and then every 1.2 meters we've got a supporting post as well. We're planting some big tuckaroos in here, or I should say Benny's planting some big tuckaroos in here, and they're going to give us some instant impact, but they've got plenty of soil, so they'll grow well. I'm then going to mirror them on the other side to make the whole space feel enclosed. With all the hard landscaping done, this garden is really coming together. Now, I have built a show garden or two in my time, but never one at a hardware store. But we are making a cracking pace. The decking's done. The screening's done. And the edging's done. We've even put in some of the trees. Now it is time for the good stuff, the plants. And like all planting schemes, you start with the biggest first. When it comes to designing a garden, I really love the combination of rounded shapes and upright spiky shapes. I've got variegated deities up next to the deck because it stays quite small. Then down on the lower level, Dorianthes excelsum. Now, this can get quite large, but it's going to give us great architectural impact. And if we're lucky, we'll get the red flower up in the sky as well. In this front garden bed, I'm going for a combination of two great Aussie natives. We've got Hardenbergia violaceae. This is a fantastic plant that you can use as a climber, a ground cover, or like I'm using it, to spill over an edge got a really hard leaf, so it can take lots and lots of sun. And it's got this flower, which is so typical of the Fabaceae family, or the pea family. Lovely pink sprays, these really interesting little blooms. And then behind it, I'm using Acacia cognata limelight. Now, this is a dwarf acacia. It will form a nice little bun. It does get a flower, but really, you grow it for this sort of shaggy foliage. A couple of great plants in a lovely combination. We all know mulch is really important for your plants, but it doesn't have to be something that's organic and breaks down. You can use pebbles as well. They retain moisture, and they look perfect against the bark of these banksias. To finish off the garden bed at the front, I'm using crushed granite. It's a really great cost-effective alternative to paving. Now, there is quite a lot of it here, but to also contrast the amount of planting at the back, it's going to give us this lovely negative space and really show off these trees. The colour ties in perfectly with our native planting theme as well. A garden isn't complete without pots. And for here, I'm using a combination of succulents and this great looking scribbly gum. Now, scribbly gums much prefer to be in the ground, so you need some space for them. If you're planting them in a deck, you can cut a hole in and maybe have it growing through. But here, I'm just putting it in a pot because it's not going to last forever. And what I really love is the glaucous foliage contrasting with this fantastic black screen. It's perfect. See, Juliet, I can style as well. I can't believe how well this garden has turned out. I'm completely chuffed with the way it's come together. Now, you might be thinking it's a bit over the top, but really, it's just a series of weekend projects you could do at home. You might build a deck. It might be a screen, a raised planter. 
or maybe just a cluster of pots. And if you do just a few of these things, it can completely transform the way you use your garden. I can see some bunny stuff coming now. Let's see what they think. Guys, Hello. tell me what you think about the garden. It is awesome. It Absolutely is, yeah. love it. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. What's your favorite part? I really love like the screening, the steps. It's all like hidden away. It's so, nice. Yeah, awesome. Really yeah, it's nice. really love yeah. it. So what do you guys think you're going to use this space for now we've built it? So it's 24-hour access from the community. Uh, it's outside the nursery. We have our sausage scissors here on the weekend, so it'd be really cool. So you can grab a sausage and sit up on the deck and relax. Absolutely, yeah. And we've got a local school performing here next, just this weekend coming. So yeah, cool. So sausage sizzles for sausage everyone. Sausage sizzles yeah. for everyone, exactly. <laughs> Charlie, a uh, little thank you for you and the team for what you've done. Um, we're going to put a plaque on okay. here. Uh, it's saying it's... Let me uh, have a look at this. Yeah, have a look. Yeah, it's uh, obviously built by Better Homes and Gardens. And Yeah. The thing is, it's mainly built by the team at Better Homes and Gardens and the team at Bunnies. I'm just a, a run-in. <laughs> I turned up late to get all the glory. But thank you so much and thank you to everyone at Bunnings and the team behind the scenes here at Better Homes and Gardens. Should we do a selfie or what? Yeah, OK. <laughs> you got the long arms. <laughs> Situation.